All right, today what we're going to look at is the uh, assembly drawing of this mechanical um, drawing for an exam. That was a 2018 exam. Right, um, let's just have a look at the question here. I'm just going to zoom in. Hopefully you guys will be able to read it. Okay, it says, uh, given the exploded isometric drawing of the parts of an oil pump assembly showing the position of each part relative to all the others. Right. Let's just have a look at that. That is that view over there. Okay, that is your Bible to doing this thing because it shows you exactly how things are fitted together and in what sequence. When you're drawing this drawing, please refer to that all the time. Okay, um, coming back over here, it says that they've got the orthographic views of all the parts of the oil pump assembly. Okay, first of all, we need to know that they are dealing with a third angle orthographic projection that's given by that symbol down there and you'll note over here I've got two views next to each other now it could either be a left view or a right view and um, or and a front view okay so I've got a front view and in this case it would be a right view and the reason why I'm saying it's a right view is that for me to get these views I would need to place myself always in between the two views and over here You'll be able to see if I put myself inside over here, I'm looking across, I'm seeing a very small circle. There's my small circle followed by a much larger circle over there. Same story over here. Um, I'm situated in between the two views, looking across. Um, I'm able to see a small circle followed by a bigger circle. And right at the back over here, you'll see that they've got some hidden detail showing you a square at the back there. Um, most of these views are done as a front view and a right view, front view, right view, front view, right view. Um, this one, however, um, they have not given you a front view and a right view. Um, they've actually given you a front view and a left view. Okay, very confusing as to why that did that. Um, if you look at their view down over here, they're saying that your front view is of that circular part with that part going down there. Therefore, that must be my front view and this is on the left-hand side, therefore it needs to be a left view. Um, it wouldn't really matter if it was drawn the other way around. At the front, the left view and the right view are going to be exactly the same, but they're just confusing the issue as far as I'm concerned. Um, over here, you can see that they've given a revolved section view, showing you what the profile of that thing is. Okay, um, they've given you these little uh, gears um, over here, and they've given you how that needs to be fitted together in these diagrams over here, so please refer to that when you are actually drawing it. Um, yeah, again, a, um, a front view, there's your front view and a right view. You'll note that when you get to the actual question itself, you're going to see that they're wanting a front view and a sectional right view. So that would be a dead given giveaway as to what they've probably shown you in the, in the drawings. Um, they want to help you out as much as possible by giving you as many front view parts and right view parts as they possibly can, so it makes it easier for you. Right, um, okay, look at the, uh, what else they've given. Um, they say, answer the question on page six. Make sure that you use page six, otherwise you'll get no marks. Uh, draw scale one is to one. Please note that, please always check that they are wanting you to use whatever scale it is and use that scale, otherwise you will lose a huge number of marks. Um, and then they ask you to draw a front view, see in the direction of the arrow in the exploded view. There we go, there's my arrow showing the direction that they're wanting uh, for the front view, and a sexual right view on the cutting plane AA. The cutting plane, which passes vertically through the oil pump assembly, is shown on the front view of the pump body. Right, we need to identify, there's the front view of the pump body, and there's the sectional plane going through. Um, there's A, A over there showing the sectional view. Right. Okay, once we've got that, um, come over here. Read the notes very carefully. It says planning is essential. Otherwise, it's going to fall off the page. Um, it says drawing must be done to the SANS code of uh, drafting practice. Uh, throw, sh show three faces of the M14 re retaining bolt. Um, in the front view, okay? Uh, when you are drawing this, you can see if I'm looking across here, I can see that face, that face, and that face. They've drawn it as they want it to be drawn 
in the front view on this view over here. So literally copying that out should get you what you're needing. Um, draw uh, the conventional representation of the worm gear assembly in the sectional right view. And over here, you can see they've already told you, here's an example of the conventional. Um, so don't start drawing the teeth because that's not going to help you. There's your conventional way of drawing it using just lines and center lines and all that. Right, okay, um, coming down here, it says um, you must add a cutting plane AA. So when you draw the thing, don't forget to put in your cutting plane. And over here, please note this, no hidden detail required. If they don't ask for hidden detail, please don't go spending hours doing hidden detail because you'll get no marks for it. In fact, you'll probably lose some. Cool, that's the first part of this video done. All right, what we're going to look at now is the planning of the drawing. Um, what we need to do is to try and figure out how big the front view is going to be um, and how big the, uh, the right view is going to be. Right, to do that, what I, I like to do is just to have a look at these different components. I'm just going to bring them down into the drawing so that you can see where I'm getting them from. There's that little bush story. I'm going to just bring that down over here so you can see it a bit easier. Um, I've got this shaft over here. Let's put that down over here so that you can see that. I've got the bolt, which I'm going to bring down over here so that you can see that. And I've got the right view of the cover plate, which is going to come down over here. Right. Okay, I'm going to just zoom in over here so that you can see this idea. If I just move that, move that up here. Right, let's zoom in and check that out. Okay, what did I do? Well, I have physically drawn in uh, the bush which goes in here. You can see I've done that in red. Um, and that gives me an extra three millimeters sticking up there. I then place that shaft inside there and you'll see that the head of that, um, that shaft, that square bit sticking out there, I've drawn that in. Um, the way that you just check that is with your pair of dividers. You can come along here, you can check on the, um, the bush, okay? There's the full length of the bush. Um, I've got a three millimeter thing which is going to be sticking out over there. I then come along here and I say, well, that edge is going to stick in there and I can then measure from the end of the bush to there, leaving the square part sticking out that 16 millimeters over there. Um, I also have the head of the bolt, which is going to be that eight millimeters and that's going to be placed over there draw that in, and then you'll be able to sort of figure out wh where that center line is going to be placed. Um, if you look at this, I've got a radius of 34 millimeters. So from there to there is 34, plus my 25, plus my eight, that gives me 67 to the center line. Going in this direction, I've got my 34 going to there. I've got my 33 plus three plus 16, and that gives me 86 millimeters going from that center line. Adding that all together, I get 153 millimeters. Um, and for my right view over here, you can see that I've got my 46 millimeters plus my 12 millimeters plus this 18, which I'm getting off over here. And I can then calculate that and I'll add that all up, getting, a, uh, getting 76 millimeters for that right view. Right, once I've got those two measurements, I can go back to my drawing over here. Just zoom out. I'm going to start out and I'm going to measure off. I'd like to use a pair of compasses for this part. 153 millimeters. That gives me this distance from there to there. Okay. I have a distance of 76 measured off from there to there. I can then say, right, well, Where's the middle part of this? Take your pair of compasses. You can draw a line, uh, just an arc like that. An arc like that, giving you a midpoint. If I draw in over here and I draw in over here, I know that I've got enough space for those two views to be placed properly. What I'd suggest is measure 10 millimeters going that way and work from that line out 
to find your center line and then measure of 10 millimeters going this way and work going that way and then you've got that 20 millimeter gap in between. Okay, let's get going with this drawing now. Um, let's start out and find out where that center line needs to be on the front view. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I need that 67 millimeters. I'm going to measure off my 67 millimeters over here. Go to that point over there. There's that center line 10 millimeters away and I'm going to mark that off. I'm going to draw in a center line straight away using my pencil. Um, you can't lose marks for drawing a center line. It should be done with a 0.3 pencil. I'm just using this pencil at the moment, but you can see I've drawn that center line in. I know that I'll get marks for it straight away. Um, I have m figured out where this drawing is going to go. Um, I know that it's got a height of 140 millimeters. Uh, if I find the center of this, I can draw a line going across, measure 70 down, 70 up, um, giving me a point there and a point there. I can then come in over here and I can darken in a section of line there and darken in a section of line over there. And I can straight away get in my section line AA, place that there, go up here, Draw that in, place an A on there, okay, and I've got a whole bunch of marks there just for drawing the section line in. Right, okay, once I've got that in place, I can now get going with actually drawing the drawing. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is to figure out uh, where this arc is going to draw, be drawn. I need a radius of 34, set my pair of compasses to 34, come in at that point. I know that there's the bottom of the, of the uh, thing. I'm going to mark off the center over there, draw in a center line straight away with a 0.3 pencil. I get marks for those center lines, so I may as well draw them in. Set your pair of compasses to that 34 and draw in an arc going around over there getting me that radius of 34. Okay, continuing, we know that this is a 34 radius. I also have the same distance on the other side. If you look at the drawing over here, you'll see that I've got that 34, which is going to go all the way around to that point. So I've got the width of this, and I can just draw a construction line in there. Um, let's just get that press stick off there. Um, I'm just going to draw a construction line in there, in over here. Just use that yellow over there just to show the construction line. Um, I know that I've got this piece over here, which is going to stick out 30 millimeters over there. So I measure off 30 millimeters. There we go. Go to that point over there, measure that off. And I can draw in another construction line coming up over here. Um, I'm going to measure off the... Um, diameter of that. Okay, it says that I've got a 24 diameter for that piece over there. If you unsure, just draw lines going across. Sorry, let me just show that to you. Draw lines going across. If you're unsure what that diameter is over there, there it says 24. Um, I need to measure that off. So 24 millimeters, 24. If you're using a pair of dividers, don't be scared to nick the page properly. Um, so that you can actually see where the marks are. And I can draw in that line coming across there, that line coming all the way across over there. Um, I can finish that off by drawing a line coming down straight away and drawing, um, well, I'm not gonna actually finish that going up there just yet. Uh, that's 140 millimeters going straight to the top there. So I can measure 140 millimeters going straight to the top there. Right. The next step is to find where this center line is over here from the top of this thing. Where do we get that? We get that off this view over here. It says that that's 18 millimeters down from the top. So I come over here and I'm going to measure 18 millimeters down from the top. Measure that off quickly, 18 moles. There we go, come down, measure that off. There's my center line point. 
I can draw in my center line coming across here. Don't be shy with the center line. You're going to be using it for quite a few things. There we go. Okay, center line done. And I can now measure out. It says that I need to measure out 25 millimeters over there. So I measure out 25 mils. Come over here, mark that off. And I can now draw in a construction line. Okay, um, come back to the drawing. It says that that over there is, uh, if I draw the lines coming across from here, you can find out what the diameter is for that. Uh, there it is. It says that that is 24 millimeters going across there, which is 12 on either side of that construction line. Take a pair of dividers, measure off 12, come in over here, measure off 12 there, measure off 12 there, and you can now draw in a line coming across over here and a line coming across over there, up to your construction line. If I overshot the mark a bit there, so I'm in a bit of a rush, and I can draw a line coming down. Uh, just rub out that little piece over there that I overshot the mark. Don't be shy about um, rubbing out. It does happen. Don't get scared about it. I know some teachers are adamant that you're going to lose lots of marks. You won't. Okay. Um, right. The next thing is we need to draw in that, um, that M14 bolt. And uh, obviously, if you've got a stencil, please use the stencil. It'll save you a huge amount of time. Right, here is my stencil with uh, an M14 on it. Um, it says over there, my M14, there we go. What I need to know is the height of the, the uh, head of this. And over here on the diagram, it says that I've got an eight millimeter head. So I come along here, I measure off eight millimeters. I come to my drawing. I measure off eight millimeters over there. I'm going to draw in a construction line. Very quickly, draw in a construction line. Right, once I've got the construction line in place, I take my M14 nut and bolt stencil, line it up on the center line, get the top of the stencil on that yellow construction line there, and I can now draw in top, slide it across, there we go, and then go over the curves with your pencil, and there's the bolt drawn in. I can now draw in the sides of the bolt, and that little line over there, and that little line over there, and that little line over there. Right, there we go, there's the bolt done. Uh, you'll get all your marks for that. Obviously, if you need to construct it, it takes a bit more time. Um, uh, if you did need to show constructions for the bolt, well, you just take your set square and you draw in a couple of extra lines. I'm just going to draw with this over here. The construction line going that way at 60 degrees. Um, I mean, 30 degrees, there we go. And I can draw in a little construction story going over here, showing where you would have placed your pair of compasses and you'll get your marks for your construction. Right, okay. Um, moving swiftly on. Uh, I now need to draw out 68 millimeters over there. Um, that I can get easily enough because I have got my measurement coming up over here. There we go. I can draw in and across over here nice and quickly there. Okay. And I can join that up going straight down over there. That's that part done. Um, right. The next part that I need to look at is this section over here. It says that I've got a diameter of 32. Okay. 32. That is 18 on either side. Right, so I measure off 32. That's 18 millimeters on that side, 18 millimeters on that side. Note how I'm using that center line. 
all the time to get my measurements. I'm going to draw a construction line coming across over here, a construction line coming across over here, and I'm now going to measure off the distance out over there. It says that I need to come out 33 millimeters there. Measure off 33 millimeters. As fast as I can. There we go. Measure that off. And I can now draw in that part. Coming down there. Coming across there. Coming across there. Note, no hidden detail needed, so I'm not trying to put in all that hidden detail in there. The next part is to draw the bush. That's this part over here. I need that extra three millimeters sticking out over there, also with a diameter of 32, so a measure of three millimeters. Three millimeters coming over here. Measure that off. Draw in three millimeters there. And just finish that off. Right. Um, I then have that little square part, which is a 16 square. So it comes 16 millimeters out. 16 millimeters out from that point over there. And I'm just going to draw a construction line coming out over there. Right. Um, I'm just going to find the center of that. There we go. There we go. Draw a line coming down over there. Take your 45 degree set square. Draw a construction line going that way. Draw a construction line going that way. And straight away I have my eight millimeters in the right place on either side. There we go. And of course you can draw in that 45 degree line with your 0.3 pencil. Draw in that 45 degree line over there with your 0.3 pencil as well. Right, our next trick is to find where the center line is for this circle on this cover plate, okay? Um, it is 115 millimeters coming down over there. So I measure off my 115 millimeters coming down and I draw in my center line over there. Right, once I've got that in place, it says that it is an M22, an M22 over there. So you can see the thread over there, the M22 thread. And I come in over here, measure off my 11 millimeters with my pair of compasses. If you've got a pair, small pair of compasses, it's probably better. Right, take your pair of compasses and you draw in a lightish 0.3 line coming around, okay? It does not form a full circle. You stop it so that it's got a small break in there, okay? So it's dark, 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 small break in there. Then I need to calculate what size that inner circle is. Well, I know that it says an M22 multiplied by 2, which means those little gaps over there, that's a 2 millimeter gap there, a 2 millimeter gap over there. So all I need to do is to take away two millimeters uh, from both sides. Okay, so I count in two millimeters from my 11 mils. Okay, which gives me a nine millimeter radius and I can now draw in a nice dark line going in there. Okay, all the way around showing that threaded hole. Okay, our next right. step is to draw in that arc over there and that arc over there. Um, it says that it's a radius of 15 over there. So I set my pair of compasses to 15 millimeter radius. There we go. Go into that center over there and draw in a 15 millimeter radius coming around over here. There we go. Okay, once I've got that in place, I need to try and figure out where the center line is for that. It says that it is 50 millimeters coming down over there. So I measure off 50 millimeters coming down from the top. 50 millimeters coming down from the top. Measure that off. 
draw in the center line automatically. And you can now take your 15 millimeter radius again and draw in that arc over there. Note, I draw the two arcs first, then I'm going to join the lines going from that arc, going up to that arc, and it all links up very nicely then. There we go. Right, once we've got that in place, um, it's got these little webs over here, um, which I just need to draw. Those are four millimeters, so two millimeters on either side of the construction line. Measure off that two millimeters over there, two millimeters on that side, two millimeters on that side, and I can draw in those two little lines over there, over there, and across over here, over there, and over there. A little bit of information that needs to go onto this is to find the center of that piece. Just draw a construction line going out there at 30 degrees, construction line going out there at 30 degrees. That will give you the center of that little part, and I can draw in a center line going over here to get the center for that. Right, after that, we can go on to draw. Okay, after you've finished drawing the front view of it, uh, you are going to take some lines going across, uh, some construction lines, just to get the height of the object. Um, and you could take some center lines across, but we're just going to have a look and see what we really need. Okay, here's my drawing over here. It says that I've got that cover plate, uh, which is 18 millimeters in thickness, which needs to be tacked on there. And then after that, I've got the body of the object of the pump that needs to be drawn. Okay, um, I'm going to measure off my 18 millimeters. 18 millimeters, there we go. And come in over here, there's a, basically a 20 millimeter gap between the two, and I'm going to measure off the 18 millimeters there. Just draw a construction line going over here. All right. Um, and then it says that I measure off 46 millimeters going across. So I measure 46 mils from that construction line that I just drew. Mark that off. Draw another construction line over there. Okay. Um, once I've got that construction line in place, uh, and then measure off, what's this, 12 millimeters over there. Measure off 12 millimeters from there. Draw another construction line. And after that, I can then start figuring, figuring out what it is that I need to draw. Okay, I'm going to start out and I'm going to draw in a dark line there. And I can draw in a dark line at the top. As well, as soon as you can see that you can draw a dark line, draw it in straight away because you get marks for the dark lines. Right, um, I'm not going to draw that line going straight down. The reason being is that it is going to be sectioned and you're going to find that it goes down to that point, then goes out, comes back, um, goes out again. Um, so you don't want to draw a dark line in straight away. Let's find that little piece over there and that little piece over there. Okay, it says that it's, I need a measurement of 50 going down to that center line. So we're going to measure down 50. 50 from the top, going down, and draw in a center line. Straight away, draw in the center line. Long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash. Okay. Um, it then says that there is a 37 millimeters between that and the next center line. So we measure off 37 millimeters there. From that center line, going down to the next center line, put it in that center line straight away. Long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash. <clears throat> right, once you've got those two center lines in place, it says that I've got a 24 diameter over there, which is a 12 millimeter diameter. Measure off 12, go over here, measure off 12 that side, turn it around 12 that side, and you can now draw in a nice dark line. Going from there to 
there and going from there to there. Right, um, I see that it has a diameter of 30 over there, so I set my pair of dividers to 15, go to the center, measure off 15 that side, and measure off 15 that side. Right, once I've got that in place, draw in a line going over there, and draw in a line going over there. Okay, once I've got that in place, I can now come back and I can draw in a solid line coming down over here, and a solid line coming down over there, solid line there, solid line there, and a solid line going over there. Right, once I've got that in place, I then take a look and see this over here. Um, you can see that this curve over here, okay, is, let's just figure out where that's coming from. That's from that center over there. Okay, I've got this big curve over here. I need the top part of that curve, okay, in order to figure out where that line is, that little bit of hidden detail is over there. So, um, what is that radius that we've got on there? It says that it is a radius of 28. So I just set my pair of compasses to 28. Let's get that out the way. Measure off 28 millimeters. Come to my center line over here and measure off 28 millimeters there. And I now can draw in a construction line. Construction line coming across there. Um, there's my construction line at that 28. Um, it then says 18 millimeters down. I've got that center line over there. I've already got that center line drawn from my previous view, so I can draw in that center line coming across over here. Long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash. Okay. Um, it says that I have got a diameter. What is that diameter over there? That is a diameter of 32, right? So I need a radius, radius of 16, okay. There we go, there's that radius of 16 over there. Um, and I come over here and I measure that off over there, and over there. Um, it says that it's actually physically touching from the looks of things, so I can measure off that story, and I can find my center for this. I can draw in the center line at that point, 16 millimeters away from there. Okay, once I've got that center line in place, um, I can then start looking at drawing in well, what is going to be in that position over there is actually going to be my shaft, which has been sectioned. Okay, my shaft and it's going to be sectioned. It's going to actually be sectioned through that thread, of, of that, um, uh, not the thread, the, the worm gear. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at this story over here. Um, what is the outside diameter of that um, that story over there, it is on my shaft over here. Let's see. There we go. There we go. And that is a diameter of 20. Okay. Diameter of 20, which I need. Uh, so it's 10 millimeters on either side. Let's draw that in. 10 mils. Go into that center and draw in your line going around there. Let's just do this. That is that. And then I need to find what the um, what the PCD of this thing is. If you look over here, you can see that I've got um, my gear over here. It says it's got a 50, and then that is 44. What is 50 multiply, um, uh, 50 take away 44? 
Um, that gives me six, which means that I've got a three millimeter tooth over here. Um, three millimeter tooth, and the middle of that tooth will be um, one and a half millimeters up from there. Is that correct? Okay. Um, yep, that's fine. So I've got that, which I need to have three millimeters, three millimeter tooth. Um, Right, so one and a half millimeter gap I need. Ah, that was 10. Take away my one and a half, which will give me eight and a half moles. And I draw in that little center line story going around here. Long dash, short dashes, showing the PCD of this, this gear. Right, okay, once I've got that in place, um, uh, that needs to be sectioned over there. Um, I need another one and a half taken off there, so I need to take that down to six millimeters. Is that right? Seven millimeters, sorry, seven. that drawn in there. Okay, so there is the inside of that worm gear. And I can now section that because when the shaft is orientated like this, you need to section it. Take your 0.3 pencil and you draw some sectioning going across there as fast as you can using the uh, spacing on your bevel. Right, okay. Um, Let's come down over here. I need to figure out the this part in here. That is a 12 millimeter hole over there. So that's six millimeters on either side of that. Let's do that quickly. Um, set my pair of compasses to six mils. Six millimeters on that side. And six millimeters on that side. And I can draw in a construction line over there. Construction line over there. And a construction line going across there. Um, this little gap over here is also, I think, meant to be six millimeters. That's, yeah, that's six millimeters over there. Quick way of getting that is you can take your set square if you've worked accurately. I draw a 45 degree line over there. That'll give me an exact six millimeters from that corner to that point over there. And I can draw a construction line coming down over here. Okay. Um, this over here, let's just have a look. Um, this hole over here, that says it's 18. So that's nine millimeters on either side of the center line. Nine millimeters over there, go over there, measure off nine millimeters there and nine millimeters over there. And same story, I can draw in line going across over there, construction line there, construction line there. Okay, once I've got that in place, um, I need six millimeters away from there. Same story, I'm going to take my set square, draw a 45 degree line in constructions. That'll give me a six millimeter gap over here that I can now draw a line going up over here. There we go. And I can now get going and draw in a few little things there. Um, this thing says that I've got a six millimeter gap going up over there. So let's draw that in. Six millimeter gap, same story. Draw your 45 degree line over there. That'll give me my six millimeter gap at the bottom. And I can then carry on and draw this thing more or less up to that point over there. Right, let's start. Draw a dark line going across there. Draw a dark line going over there. Draw a dark line going across over here. Draw a dark line going across there. 
Dark line there. Dark line there. And I can draw in that. And I can draw in that story over there. This, I've got a line that's going to come across over here. And I can draw in a dark line coming down there. In fact, I can draw a dark line coming all the way through here, as far as I know. And I can then hatch in a whole lot of this stuff straight away. Right, there's basically the body of this thing. Um, you can see that body over there. Um, I can, um, yeah, there's the body. I've cut through it. What am I able to see? The top and the bottom, it's cut through there, it's cut through there, and I can now hatch in that part. Right, hatching. Let's start over here, do that hatching as fast as I can. May as well grab the marks while you can for something easy. Let your mind relax a little bit um, while you're hatching and think about other wonderful things in your life. Don't waste time on hatching. Um, you don't get that many marks, but it's definitely, if you just need to relax your mind in the exam, um, the hatching is definitely a good way of getting a few marks while you are just thinking about bigger things. Just make sure that you don't miss things like that so that you don't waste time. Make sure that all of your hatching is right. I'm going to stop it at that point. I think that I need a, another little circle over here. I just realized that while I was busy with this. Um, I've got a diameter 24 circle over there, which I think I need to put into this thing. Let me do that quickly. Set this to 12. Come in over here and draw in this diameter 24 circle over here, which I think goes all the way around there. So it's going in over there, coming all the way around to there. And I can now catch in the rest of this thing coming around here. Right, hatching done for the body. I'll get a whole bunch of marks just for doing that. Right, okay, once I've got that in place, um, let's have a look at this cover that needs to go in over here. Um, let's get my cover going in there. Right. Okay, it says that I need a six millimeter thing over there. You'll see that there are two little dowels that are meant to shove in there, but if you look at the hatching, uh, you're not, you know, uh, not this hatching, the sectioning, those little dowels are not touched, um, so you don't need to worry about them. I've got six millimeters over there, so I must draw that in. Um, measure off my six millimeters. Six millimeters coming out here. Knock that in place. Draw a nice little construction line coming down here. Okay, um, it then goes out, it's 18 millimeters out, so measure off 18 millimeters, go from there, 18 millimeters out, I've already got that in place. Um, it says that, okay, I've got that little pot over there, which I can now take across, you can see the, that, section over there, if I take that across, I've got the intersection over there. So I can join that up with a nice dark line. From there to there. I can draw in that story over there. Right, um, 
I then go down, 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 down. Um, that over there is for the bottom over there. So I can come in over here. There's that little bit of web over there. Take a line coming across from that. And I can draw in a line going from there to there. And I can draw in my bottom little piece over there. Um, obviously, that is a, a web over there. You don't section webs, so let's draw that in. There we go. And there we go. And the same story for this top web over here. You don't section that, so I need to draw that in. There and there. Okay, once I've got that in place, um, I can draw a line going all the way down, linking those two. And I've got that plate more or less done. I now need to draw in all of these little holes over here that have been cut through. Um, and what do they look like? Okay, I've got, it says 50 millimeters down from the top. I've got that little story over there so i measure off 50 millimeters down from the top which i think i've already got uh that's in line with that story over there um if i look over here 50 millimeters down from the top gets you that and 50 millimeters down from the top gets you that so those two link up i can carry on with my center line coming across here all right and um that little hole over there is a diameter 12 millimeter hole over there. So I can continue with this story over here. Um, just draw those construction lines coming out from there and there. How deep does that little hole go? Um, it says that I go 12 millimeters in. Okay, so we measure off 12 millimeters. Come over here, measure off 12 millimeters there, draw my construction line in there, and I can actually draw that in dark straight away. There, and there, and I can draw in that story over there. Right, um, come over here. Uh, this story over here, 37 millimeters down from there. That's the same as that. Uh, so I can take that straight across. That, that center line over there can carry on. Um, and on either side of that, um, that's also 12 millimeters. So I measure off my six millimeters on either side of that. Measure off six mils. There and there, and draw in a construction line. Draw in a construction line there. Draw in a construction line there. The depth of that hole is exactly the same as the previous one over here. Um, so I can drop a line coming straight down over there from that, and I can draw in a line going over there, a line going over there, and I can link in that point and that point. Right, okay, there's the two little holes that I need. Um, and then I'll start having a look and seeing what goes into those little holes that I've got um, over there, over there, and uh, obviously on my, f my faceplate story over there, or cover plate. Right, right, I also need to put in this little uh, hole over here, this threaded hole over here with this little hole that goes through. See the threaded hole part over there with the hole going through. Um, okay, so let's have a look at that. Um, come in over here. My threaded hole has been drawn over here on the drawing, so I can take that across with some construction lines. There. 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 And there. Okay, um, once I've got that in place, what is the depth of that hole? It tells you that you've got a depth of, oh, where does it tell you that? 
doesn't. That little depth over there is They have not given that depth to you. But if you look over here, you'll see that it's exactly halfway. So we've got an 18 divided by two, that gives you nine. Okay, so it's exactly halfway. Nine millimeters over there. Measure off nine millimeters going across. And there's my threaded hole. I can draw that in. Line coming down over there. Line going Cross over here, this is a 0.3 line going across, okay, followed by a 0.5 line going up to a 0.5 line and a 0.3 line over here, um, just to show the thread that is in that hole. I also have that little uh, six millimeter hole that needs to go through, and that goes through over there, and from that point over there going through over there. So there's that little six millimeter hole going through. Obviously, center line. Don't forget the center lines. They're really, really important. You get marks for them. Okay, once we've dropped that, I then need to relax my mind again and do some hatching. Note the hatching was going in that direction. This is a different part, so we're going to go with our hatching in the opposite direction. Um, coming across here with a 0.3 pencil, you do your hatching and you can draw the hatching going through the thread over here because there's nothing threaded into that hole. There's no bolt or anything in that hole at the moment. So draw your hatching going across and uh, over here you can start going through the thread over there, the piece over there, continue. There we go, that's just going straight across there. That, that, as I say, use this as an opportunity just to relax your mind a little bit when you're in the exam. It's sometimes actually just your break that you can take while you just relax. Draw it as fast as you can and uh, just take a little bit of a refresher. Right, start thinking about what you're going to draw next. I think my next thing that I want to draw is the gear that attaches to that worm gear. And I can start looking at my sheet and trying to figure out what, um, what it is that I need. There we go. Okay, um, here is the little gear story. That little gear needs to slot in over there. Okay, so there it is. Um, it's going to be slotting into that 12 millimeter hole over there. So what do I need? Um, let's get all the dimensions that I need for that. Might as well stick that over here while I'm busy. Um, right. It says that I've got a 12 millimeter gap over there. Well, let's just measure off 12 mils. 12 mils there, it's from there to there. Um, so that will get me something going in there. Um, Right, yeah, it should end up exactly that distance over there. I don't think that I've measured that very accurately. That should be exactly 12 mils over there. Um, okay, once you've got that in place, um, it's going to come out. Uh, it's going to come out over here. What's this? Uh, three millimeters out. So let's measure off three millimeters. Three millimeters out there, mark that off. And I'm just going to use blue construction lines for this. There we go, blue construction line coming down there. Um, it then goes across uh, from there, it's 22 across, let's do that. So 22, it says from, from outside to outside over there is 22. So let's go 22 over there. Go over here, measure off 22 over there. Let's just draw a blue construction line. Right, um, three millimeters in from that. Three 
three millimeters over there, that little piece over there, three millimeters in from that. Let's draw another blue construction line in here. There we go. Um, it then says that we've got a 10 millimeter gap there. All right, so let's just find the center of this. It's going to go just a quick line over there line over there that gets me the center of this which should link up with that center line over there okay um, and I need five millimeters on either side of that five millimeters on either side of that center line there and there let's just draw so these are green there we go right um, the top of this is going to intersect with that part over there. So I can draw in a line coming across like that. Okay, then it comes down at 45 degrees to there. It comes down at 45 degrees to there. Okay, um, you can see the PCD in there, that long dash, short dash line going around in there. That gives me the center of the tooth. And um, <coughs> I can then draw in a long dash, short dash line going across where that long dash, short dash line goes through the center over there. Right, okay, once I've got that in place, um, I need to figure out how big this gear is. It says that I have got a Maximum diameter of 50. Okay, so I should be able to go from the center of this thing. And that should be 25 over there. Hopefully I've got that right. And it's spot on 25. There we go, 25 over there. So there's my 25 going down to there. Measure of 25 going to that point over there. Draw that line going across there. Draw a 45 degree line going over there, a 45 degree line going over there. Um, the PCD part of this thing, that's that little gap in there. I need to measure that off so that you have that on either side of the gear. There it is. Draw your long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash going across there. Um, you can draw in a line coming straight down over here. Line going straight down over there. Line going straight down over there. Line going straight down over there. There is the gear drawn in. Um, I need the diameter of that part over there. This, this inner circle over here, which is this part from there to there. That, it says, is... Uh, 36, okay, 36 divided by 2 gives you 18, is that right? Yeah, 18, okay, 18 millimeters. There we go, take that, measure that off from that center line, 18 that way, from the center line, 18 that way. Come in over here, go in that part, and that part over there. Yeah. And that part and that part over there. Draw in a line coming straight down over here. Okay. Um, right, after you've done that, then we take a look and see um, that center line that is over there. Where is that now? That is quite tricky, isn't it? Um, right. So hang on. Right, measuring our eight millimeters down over here to get that center line over there. Let's find that. Eight millimeters coming over here. There's my eight millimeters down and I mark that off and I can draw in my second center line. Okay, out of that, I need to draw in my little shaft that's going to come out there. Uh, it says that that goes out 12 millimeters over there, and it is a shaft diameter of 12 millimeters. So six millimeters on either side, 
Let's do that six millimeters. And there we go, six millimeters there, six millimeters there. Draw in a construction line coming out there. Draw in a construction line coming out over there. All right. Okay, then it says that um, that little shaft, uh, it goes six millimeters across from, so it's 12 millimeters out. 12 millimeters out, there we go. There's 12 millimeters going out over there. All right, that's right. Okay. Um, then I have six millimeters going up, six millimeters from there, that's that over there. Okay, so it basically goes from there up to that point. So I can draw my shaft over there, over there, it's 12 millimeters out. I then take this and I draw a line is going to go from that point up to there. There we go. And it's the same angle. Just take your set square, slide that across. It should link up beautifully over there. There's my little shaft story going in there. Um, right, on either side of that shaft, I have got my bush, which is going to go. It's a split bush. And it says that it's got a radius of eight on that outside. You can see the six millimeters on the inside. So I need to measure off a radius of eight. Um, radius of eight millimeters on either side. All right, let's just go over here. There's my eight millimeters that side, eight millimeters that side. And I can draw in my little bush says that the bush is 12 millimeters, so that 12 millimeters needs to go in over here. Just going to draw in that bush. There it is, over there, and over there, and it is over there, and over there. And I can draw that in nice and dark. All that in over there. There's the bush. And do some very small hatching over here, just with your point three pencil. And you can make that quite small, that hatching. There we go. There's the bush that's been put in place. Around that bush, I now need to put in this pump plunger story. Okay. Right, the pump plunger, it says that I've got a diameter of, uh, let's just see, that's a radius of 10, a radius of 10, sorry, a radius of 10 over here, going out to the edge over there. Um, it's a diameter of 16 on the inside. Okay, that's, we can do that, 10 millimeters. Let's go over here from that center line, 10 millimeters over there, turn that round. And 10 millimeters over there. That's that. Didn't give you much of a. That goes in over there. I'm just going to draw a construction line over there. Construction line over there. Um, and we now need to look at that says that it is six millimeters. Right, six millimeters. And I'm going to place it in the middle of this thing over here. Okay, so we're going to go over here. And we're going to place set square over there, find the center of this, and place this plunger in the center of the story over here. Um, it's going to be six millimeters, so three millimeters on either side. Take three millimeters over there, measure off six millimeters there. I'm measuring three millimeters on either side of that line. That part I can draw in over there, over there, over there, over there. All right. Um, so I've drawn that little piece in over there. 
Um, that then goes down. Um, phew, from the very top, it's 71 millimeters down. So a measure of 71 millimeters from the top of that, 71 millimeters from the top of that, going down to there. And draw in a construction line over there. There we go. Um, and then it says that I have got this thing that's 10 millimeters wide over there. Measure of 10 millimeters, so that's five millimeters on either side of that. Five millimeters there, five millimeters there. And I can draw in a line going up. Basically go straight up there. And straight up there. And a line going across over here. There to there. Right. Um, Phew, it's a long drawing this. Let's just finish the base of that off. And then we'll continue with, um, it's this last piece over here that I need to draw in. Okay, let's finish up the, uh, the uh, plunger over here. You can see that I've drawn a little line coming down there, a little line coming down there, and I've drawn a center line going in there. That center line is going to be very important for when we start drawing the pump housing part. Okay, I've cut out that pump housing just to make it a bit easier to transfer measurements. Um, the measurements can get quite interesting over here. They've given a distance of eight millimeters from that center line, which is where that uh, plunger is going to be, that center line, eight millimeters going across. So you measure across from that, eight millime from that center line over there, eight millimeters across, and you can draw a construction line coming down over there. Um, it then says that from the top over there, um, coming down um, over here is 16 millimeters down to the, um, to the center line coming across over there. So 16 millimeters from that center line, I can measure up 16 millimeters, measuring 16 millimeters go over there to the center line and I can draw a construction line coming across at 16 millimeters up. Um, from there, I can take a 20 millimeter gap going across there. So a measure of 20 millimeters over there, measure from that line over there to there. There's my 20 millimeters. It should link up exactly in here. So I've got eight millimeters over there from the center line, 20 millimeters going across from there to there. And I can then draw in the line coming down to where the shaft is. Now my shaft is 18 millimeters. I can draw that shaft in straight away, right up to there. Shaft coming across right up to there. I can draw in a line coming down to the shaft from the top. There it is. Draw a line coming across over here, and a line coming across over there. Right. Um, it then tells me that I can go 56 millimeters all the way from the top over there down to the bottom. So a measure of 56 millimeters. 56 millimeters from there going all the way down to the bottom over there. And I can draw in a line coming across over here. And I can draw in that line going down over there. Right, um, inside of this thing, uh, I have a hole which um, basically comes down 53 millimeters from the top. So a measure of 53, measure from the top of this thing, 53 millimeters coming down. Okay, there we go. Draw a construction line coming across over here. And this plunger needs to be able to go down to that so I can draw a line coming down from there, line coming down from there, line going across over there. And I can basically hatch in all of the pot, except I need to put in a little squiggly line over there because we never section shafts. And the same story over here. I'm going to draw a squiggly line going in over there because we never section shafts. Right, after that, I can hatch this part. 
There we go. And that is basically the drawing done. Let's get that part hatched nicely. squiggly line that I just drew. There we go. There we go. There we go. And that is that done. Right, I think that that's everything that I need in there. Um, and that's it. Check, 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 check. Um, oh yes, I've got a little line over there that can be drawn in because there's an angle at that point and an angle at that point. Um, there is a line going across here because that is a shaft. Got that in there. Um, anything else that I need to look at? No, that is everything done for this thing and that is it. Don't forget to put in the section line. You can also I sometimes like you to write in a label over here um, saying uh, section section A dash A or you can say um, write sectional view. Right, there we go, that's it.